This will be the last in the sequence on the vector operator. In this one, we're going to look at sort of products of the vector operator with itself and also sort of triple products between uh, vector fields, scalar fields, and this vector operator. So it's going to be a little bit of uh, sort of mixing and matching of multiplications here. Uh, so we'll just recall our definition of the vector operator. It's this vector of partial derivatives. And for our purposes here, we'll define a vector field A, which is a function of the three coordinates, x, y, and z, and also a scalar field phi, which is a function of x, y, and z. But before we jump into that, we'll look at what happens. So we, previously, we looked at what happens when we take a dot product of the vector operator with a vector field to get the divergence. Now we'll look at what happens when we take a dot product of the vector operator with itself. So we actually call that the Laplacian. So if we take the dot product of the vector operator with itself, so nabla dot nabla, in two sets of brackets here. So I'm going to have d by dx, d by dy, d by dz. Same thing over here. Put in my unit vectors, i, j, and k. So now if I work out this dot product, I see I've got a vector dotted with a vector, so that gets a scalar, and it's going to be d squared by dx squared, d squared by dy squared, and d squared by dz squared. That's just the definition of the Laplacian. Uh, the reason why it's called the Laplacian is because it's associated with the Laplace equation and also with the Poisson equation, which we'll be looking at in more detail in a later video, actually. The theories of gravimetric surveys and also magnetic surveys in geophysics rely heavily on the Poisson equation, which makes use of this operator. So sometimes for shorthand, we just write that as Nabla squared. So when you see Nabla squared, that means the Laplacian. We'll now look at how we define the product rule in differential calculus when we're using this vector operator. So in calculus, the product rule is when I take the derivative of two functions. So if I'm saying d by dx of two functions, say f and g, that's equal to df by dx times g plus f times dg by dx. Supposing that f and g are only functions of x. So that's product rule just for functions of single variables. Uh, where the, these are scalar functions of single variables. So let's see how that translates into vector derivatives of scalar or vector fields. So let's say I want to take the divergence of a vector field that I get through scalar multiplication of a scalar field, which is a function of x, x being a vector here, and a, which is a vector field that where all components are functions of all three variables. So I have to be careful about how I expand that. I cannot take the divergence of a scalar field phi. So when I do this product rule, what I end up with is that I take the derivative of the first, which is the gradient of phi, dotted with the vector field a 
plus the scalar field phi multiply through scalar multiplication with the divergence of A. So of course, this is a vector field. It's just a scalar multiplied by a vector. It gives us another vector. And the dot product between a vector, or a vector operator here, and a vector field should give us a scalar. Well, let's check that. The gradient here of phi is a vector, and dotted with a vector, that gives us a scalar, plus the scalar field multiplied by the divergence of A, which also gives us a scalar. So this works out in terms of adding apples and apples, scalars with scalars, and it gives us the, or the expected result. So when we're doing a product rule involving a divergence, that's how we expand it. We can do the same thing when we do the curl. So if we have the curl of the same field, phi a, that's going to look very similar, except now we replace the dots with crosses to tell us that we're doing the curl. So we're going to have gradient of phi crossed with a plus phi times the curl of a. Just filling that in. Gradient. Here's our vector operator again. Vector field a. scalar field phi. So the curl of the vector field phi a is the gradient of phi crossed with a plus phi times the curl of a. So this is the curl uh, cross product between a vector and a vector. So that should give us vector results. So here we've got a vector gradient of phi crossed with a. That gives us another vector. And then we have phi, which is a scalar field, multiplied by the curl, which is a vector field. So in total, that is also a vector field. The last thing we can look at are some important identities related to uh, sort of triple product identities. So we say vector uh, derivative identities. First one that we'll look at is the curl of the gradient. So we have a vector field, the gradient, and the curl of that, in fact, is always zero. So you may hear this often in discussions of uh, fields based on potential Right, so a potential field, you might have potential flow or in fluid mechanics or in gravity and magnetics, we have fields defined based on potential. We say those fields are irrotational. That's what this says. The curl of a potential field is zero. That means it has no rotation, no curl. That's an important identity. We can often simplify our equations when we're developing uh, differential equations in the vector calculus. Another one that we can look at is the dot product, so the divergence of the curl. So the divergence of the curl of some vector field A. It's also always zero. So this is a scalar now, so the divergence of a vector field gives us a scalar. That one is also zero. So it means the curl, if your parameter of interest is defined to the curl, it has no net outflux per unit volume. The curl has no net outflux per unit volume. That's the meaning of that. And the last one, this is going to give us a relationship lopsided vector operator. So this is going to be the curl of the curl, essentially. So I 
I know what you're thinking. That one is zero too, right? What are, are all these triple products zero? Actually, no, this one does not work out to zero, but we can write it out in a different way that is often easier to solve. So when we're constructing uh, solutions to these fields, sometimes we can get some traction by rewriting an operation in a different way. So the curl of the curl is equal to the gradient of the divergence minus the Laplacian of A. Uh, it's important to realize that this Laplacian here is multiplied by a vector field. So this actually gives us three equations in essence. So the curl of the curl is a vector field and that's going to give us in Cartesian system three coordinates or three equations. So curl of the curl is the gradient of the divergence minus the Laplacian. Okay, so that finishes this sequence on the vector operator. So Later on, when we're developing our geophysical theories, we'll be making use of these elements to build up our theory. Looking forward to doing that. Thanks.